So we have different sprinkler system types, as you see on the schematic. We have a uh, dry system, we have wet systems. And in general, we have, uh, especially in the projects in Turkey, almost in all projects, we have a fire water tank supplying our uh, fire protection system. And there is a fire pump, pump room, and inside the building we have an alarm valve and sprinkler systems so there is a complete system consisting of water supply pump system and the valve systems and in the end we have the sprinklers but we only see normally in our daily life the sprinkler head above our head so when we when we see the the sprinklers from now we will think about the complete system uh, that should be uh, clearly a uh, big investment for any kind of facility. So you remember this schematic, this is a standard wet system and all the pipes are filled with water. And when the sprinkler operates, all, uh, the, the sprinkler discharges the water immediately onto the fire. So we use here, wet alarm valves, which is called uh, wet system alarm valves. And these valves are typically a check valve that allows the water flow in single direction on the sprinkler direction. And the, the target of this uh, using this valve is to get an alarm from the system, also to test the system before the fire happens. So we want the system to inform us when there is a fire happens or a sprinkler operates that should mechanically or electrically gives an alarm to us. So let's see in an animation how this wet system valve works. A fire has started in the building. As the fire grows and the heat reaches the rated temperature, the sprinkler will activate. Since this is a wet system, water is already in the pipes, allowing the immediate delivery of water to the fire. After the sprinkler activates and water flow is established, the clapper is fully lifted off of the seat and the alarm ports are exposed allowing water to enter and fill the alarm line. If the system is equipped with a retard chamber, there will be a slight delay as the chamber fills before activating the water flow alarm. The retard chamber is a device that prevents false trips by containing up to a gallon of water flow prior to creating an alarm. Inadvertent water flow will only be able to fill a portion of the retard chamber's capacity. The alarm line is equipped with a 1 8 restricted orifice that allows the retard chamber to externally drain and reduces false alarms. During a fire, a consistent flow of water enters the alarm trim and fills the retard chamber faster than the restriction can drain, and the water flow continues through to the alarm devices. The water will then activate the water flow alarm, alerting the fire department and informing building occupants to evacuate. The water motor gong is installed as a failsafe to any electrical alarms. The sprinklers continue to control the fire until the fire department arrives. So uh, I will operate again the same animation because it's a little bit fast explanation. So. A fire has started in the building. As the fire grows and the heat reaches the rated temperature, the sprinkler will activate. Since this is a wet system, water is already in the pipes, allowing the immediate delivery of water to the fire. After the sprinkler activates and water flow is established, the clapper is fully lifted off of the seat 
and the alarm ports are exposed, allowing water to enter and fill the alarm line. If the system is equipped with a retard chamber, there will be a slight delay as the chamber fills before activating the water flow alarm. The retard chamber is a device that prevents false trips by containing up to a gallon of water flow prior to creating an alarm. Inadvertent water flow will only be able to fill a portion of the retard chamber's capacity. The alarm line is equipped with a 1 8 restricted orifice that allows the retard chamber to externally drain and reduces false alarms. During a fire, a consistent flow of water enters the alarm trim and fills the retard chamber faster than the restriction can drain, and the water flow continues through to the alarm devices. The water will then activate the water flow alarm, alerting the fire department and informing building occupants to evacuate. The water motor gong is installed as a failsafe to any electrical alarms. The sprinklers continue to control the fire until the fire department arrives. Okay, this is basically a wet alarm valve by the, by the name. You can see it works as, a, as an alarm device. It gives an alarm. Here you have a water motor alarm. It's like a gong. Uh, it turns with the water velocity and it gives an alarm mechanically and it's, uh, it's ringing like a bell. So it gives a mechanical alarm to the building, uh, the, to the people in the building to escape and also fire brigade to approach the right place for the fire. So also we have here an electrical alarm device. When water comes here, the electrical alarm is given uh, to, the, to the fire detection panel and it gives that signal as an alarm, as a secondary electrical alarm. Another application is the dry systems. And we use dry alarm valves in these kind of applications. And it is uh, it looks like more complicated. So again, I will uh, show you an animation, how it works and where it is used. These kind of systems are especially used in the unheated areas. And, uh, A fire areas has started in the, the building. Object to the freezing. As the fire grows and the heat reaches the sprinkler's rated temperature, the temperature sensitive device and the automatic sprinkler operates. The temperature sensitive device could be a fragile ball or a fusible link. Once the temperature sensitive device operates, either the pip cap or the seal will be displaced by air pressure. Air escapes through the activated sprinklers, causing the air pressure within the outlet chamber of the valve, the trim, and the pipes to drop. If the system is equipped with an accelerator, a sudden drop of air pressure will cause the accelerator to activate, directing air pressure from the system side or outlet side of the dry pipe valve to the intermediate chamber of the dry pipe valve. If the air supply is equipped with an air maintenance device, air will pass through the air maintenance device to the system. As pressure reduces in the outlet chamber, the differential in the valve is equalized to a point that the remaining air pressure in the system cannot hold the clapper closed. The clapper is pushed open by the incoming water supply and then securely latched out of the way. Water flows through the valve and trim piping. The water flow alarms are activated. Water flows through the system, taking the path of least resistance to the open sprinklers. Air pressure will remain trapped in the pipes that are not in the critical path to the open sprinklers. As time passes, water will displace the remaining air and the lines will fill with water. The sprinklers continue to control the fire until the fire department arrives.
So this system keeps the pressure of the water, uh, sprinkler water inside the pipe with air pressure. The air pressure inside the uh, valve. Second. The air pressure inside the pipe is keeping the valve closed. So we don't have any water inside the pipes in the room. So when the fire started, the sprinkler head is the sprinkler head is activated. So the sprinkler act activates. After the activating, uh, the air inside the pipes is being uh, escaped from the pipe. So the air inside the pipe, air pressure is reducing. When the pressure drops, the system, the valve, the valve opens inside the valve clapper inside the valve body opens and releases the water inside the pipe. As you see on the ceiling, the water passes all the pipes and goes to the open sprinkler and just above the fire, it discharges the water. So normally before the activation of the system, we don't have any water inside the pipes. So this is called dry system and dry alarm valve. And it's again giving an alarm like mechanical alarm and electrical alarm that the system operated. And it uh, gives information about the system operation. And we have another system called the deluge valves. The deluge valve systems are used in mainly uh, spray systems that we have open kind of sprinklers or open nozzles. That means they don't have any temperature activation devices. All are open. And when you send the water from the uh, main system or main valve, all the nozzles or openings release water at the same time. So not only the activated sprinkler, because we don't have here a heat activated sprinkler, all of them are open or any kind of different device, nozzle open devices. So the water comes out from all the open uh, items, opening uh, on, the, on the pipes. There we have an activation, uh, electrical activation panel. And we have a detector system. So uh, electronical detectors like smoke detectors, flame detectors, or other kinds of fire detectors are connected to the activation panel. Here you see the, the fire extinguishing panel. And the panel activates when you have a fire alarm, the panel activates these uh, 24 volt solenoid that activates and releases the pressure inside the valve and opens it and sends the water to the pipes. And this system also has no water inside the pipes, but also no pressurized air inside the pipe. It's open completely. So it's different kind of a system that I will show you in a foam system example in coming slides. And we have another system called pre-action system. Pre-action valve systems are pre-action valve systems are uh, as coming from its name is pre-action and pre-alarm systems. So when you have, for example, here we see double interlock pre-action system, and when you have this kind of system, the only way you will see water coming from the sprinklers is activation of the sprinkler and the detection, both 
uh, activated at the same time. So, for example, somebody hit the sprinkler and we don't have any fire in the room. Somebody hit the sprinkler uh, by accident and it's open. So we have a very important room, uh, historical records or archives or uh, very expensive uh, devices inside the room. So somebody, if somebody accidentally hit a sprinkler, there should not uh, be any water coming out of sprinkler uh, by accident because it will be more harmful than fire to the to the documents inside or to the devices that we protect so it could it should be a pre action system when a sprinkler broke accidentally the system gives you an alarm that uh, yes here there is a problem a sprinkler open but the de detector doesn't give us a smoke alarm so there is no fire so in order to be a fire, there should be two actions needed. So this is called pre-action alarm valves. So it gives you an information that there is a problem at first. And if there is no, uh, there is one of the systems not operated like detectors or sprinklers, it will not release water inside the room. So this is a, a pre-action alarm valve system. So it's, it is in general used in also cold storage rooms uh, that requires dry systems. The, the pipes are filled in with uh, pressurized air and we don't have water inside the pipes. Just to protect the room we are uh, protecting, but protecting the devices or material inside uh, accidental water discharge. So uh, this is kind of a double safety system when you consider about very special and expensive uh, room uh, materials. So these are our different types of sprinklers and spray systems uh, and the valve alarm valve systems. So they are all in coordination with uh, the alarm and detection systems, but these are the widely used fire protection systems in, in general uh, in all the buildings that we are living in or we are studying or we are using. So these are the main and widely used uh, protection systems in our life. 